We've been to multiple continents and almost 30 countries with our five kids, so these aren't generic tips. These are the best practices that we've learned when traveling internationally with kids. Let's get started. So this is about saving money, but it's also about just general tips. Since we've been traveling the world, we've realized it's not as expensive as we thought it would be, and we've learned things to make it even less expensive. If we haven't met yet, my name is Kalen. I'm the founder of Freedom Sprout, where we talk about raising intentional children and living intentional lives. If that interests you, please hit the subscribe button below. Okay, number one, know the cheapest ports. I'm not talking about wine here, I'm talking about the cheapest places to enter different continents and countries, those ports. For example, if you're headed out of the States and you're going to Europe, JFK in New York is usually the cheapest airport to fly out of and to fly back into. When you're flying into Europe, Copenhagen in Denmark is usually the cheapest airport to fly into and to fly back out of. I don't know why, that's just how it is. Number two, know your airlines. Once you're in Europe, if you're planning to travel to Europe, there are a lot of dirt cheap airlines like Ryanair, EasyJet, and Wizz Air. But you have to know about them, know how to find the tickets, and know the baggage restrictions. Since most of them do charge for checked bags, sometimes it pays to figure out how to travel light. And I'll link a video on how to travel light with family, with our kids, everything that we take with us. We only take one checked bag for all seven of us, one total, and then everyone has their own carry-on. Number three, know your travel tools. There are tools out there like Skyscanner. I'll put a link to that below if you're not familiar with it. And if you sort by lowest price, that's where you'll see things like Denmark being the cheapest and JFK. So it's good to use tools like Skyscanner, but it's also good to know how to use them. You always need to use them in a private or an incognito browser because you'll notice whenever you're using your regular browser and you're not in private mode, the prices will start going up as you're searching for tickets. And then of course you need to know the travel range. You should book domestic tickets two to three weeks in advance, whereas international tickets, the best price is gonna be five to six months in advance. If you book too early or if you book too close to time, it's gonna be more expensive. And finally, January is the cheapest month to fly in, followed by February and then August. Those are the top three cheapest months to fly in in general. Number four, know your flight path. Again, this isn't just about money, it's about best practices for traveling with children internationally. If you can find a direct flight, that's almost always gonna be better, but if you do have a layover, don't just make sure that it's a quick layover. We usually like at least three hours, if not four hours, when traveling internationally, because you have to clear customs, sometimes you have to pick up your baggage if you're flying on multiple airlines. There's a lot of stuff to do on a layover. You wanna make sure you have enough time if you have to have one. And I wouldn't recommend having more than one layover if you can help it when you're traveling with kids just because it gets to be stressful and that's a lot of time flying. So a nonstop flight is the best, but if you have a layover, keep them to a minimum, preferably no more than one. Number five, know your non-traditional lodging options. Hotels are expensive. Our family doesn't even really fit into hotels anymore, so we've had to find other ways to stay, and we've found that they're actually a lot cheaper. I've recommended Airbnb like 100 times, and I'll recommend it again right now because it is so much cheaper and more comfortable, and when you're traveling internationally, Airbnb allows you to get a lot more culture because you're staying right in the middle of a town in an actual house or an apartment in that area, and you get a host so you can find the local tips and everything. It's just a lot better to stay at Airbnb, in my opinion. Get almost $50 off your first trip with my link if you've never used Airbnb before. I definitely recommend it, especially when you're traveling to Europe. Number six, know your transportation. There will be some form of public transportation in every country you go to that's gonna be the cheapest and the best, but you have to do your research ahead of time to figure out which form of public transportation that is. See if it's best to take the train, the bus, the metro, the taxis, the Ubers, if they even have Uber, the water taxis, that's a thing. Most cities offer some sort of family discount for a family pass, and then they have day passes and city passes and different things like that. So look into what that city pass offers and see if it's worth it. And you can find all of this information on Google or even YouTube to figure out the best practices for that area and what you should purchase. Some of those city passes are great deals, some of them are rip-offs and scams. You just have to know ahead of time based on reading and videos and just doing the research before you go. Number seven, know your destination before you go. And I don't just mean know where you're going, I mean know about where you're going. There are plenty of videos on YouTube about wherever you're traveling to, I promise. There's also plenty of articles, 
you can find all kinds of information about the city or cities that you're going to. And this is going to be a big factor as to how you move around once you're in that city. This isn't so much about the public transportation, though yeah, do your research about that, but I'm talking about like the foot traffic. Some places like Venice, for example, are terrible places for strollers, and you need to know ahead of time if you have young kids, you're going to want to bring like a backpack for your kids because there's a lot of stairs in Venice. You're going to want to take a gondola ride while you're there, and that's really tough to do with the stroller. Gondolas aren't very big. We use an Osprey hiking backpack whenever we go places into cities where walking is the best option, but a stroller isn't the best option. It's an Osprey hiking backpack, and I'll put a link to that below. It's been great, and it has extra storage if we want to purchase anything, so we can hold that, and then we can hold all the stuff that we need to take with us. And if you do decide to still use a stroller, and you see that the place you're going to is stroller friendly, just find some sort of compact stroller or something that's easy to take on the airplane, because don't forget, you're going to have to take that on the airplane, and you don't want to be lugging some huge double stroller. If you have two kids in a stroller, maybe just get two compact strollers, for example. And the final point is kind of an unfortunate one. Number eight, know you may lose your luggage. I'm as optimistic as they come, but I'm also realistic, and I know a lot of my happiness comes from low expectations, especially when you're dealing with things like baggage claim and airport baggage systems in general. At this point, since I've actually seen videos on how airport luggage systems work, I'm surprised anyone ends up with their luggage whenever they get to their destination. And a lot of times you won't because bags are going to get lost. We've traveled enough to know that your luggage is going to get lost at some point, most likely. One time we shipped a double stroller brand new in the box from Dallas to Venice, Italy, and somehow they lost that behemoth of a box. But when this does happen and they do lose your luggage, just know that it's their fault and they're the ones that need to make it right. You shouldn't be going back to the airport to pick up your luggage. They actually have services and drivers that take your luggage to you, but they're not going to always give you that information up front. Sometimes you have to ask about it. They would much rather you just come to the airport and then they don't have to pay the driver to take it out to you but it's their fault, so they should be paying that driver. Be prepared that there's a good chance at some point one of your bags is going to be missing and you're gonna to have to deal with that. And if you're prepared for it, you're not gonna be devastated when it happens. And that's also a reason not to pack super high valuable things to you, like personally valuable things in your checked bag. So that's it. Those are my best practices for traveling internationally with kids. If you have questions, share those in the comments below. I'd love to respond. We have a lot of experience and hopefully we can help you out. And before you go, please subscribe to get more videos on money, minimalism, and our travel journey around the world. Check out my new book, intentional children. I will put a link to that below. And that's all for today. I will see you next week.